All right, well today we are back to work in the garage working on the K24 Swap Sephiro build, the ultimate street drift car build, if you will. Well, that was the intent behind it at least. So we are getting the new motor back together. Now, if you haven't been following along, if you're new here, uh, long story short, built this car with a stock bottom end motor, kind of kept up in the power, up in the boost, making more and more low end torque, and it finally had enough. The stock rods are a big weak point on a K24, and we found that out the hard way, sent a rod through the block, basically split the block in half, set the car on fire, it was an absolute mess. So it's been sitting for a bit, and I'm antsy to get this thing back up and running, get it back on the road, and start enjoying it again. So started putting together this motor. So this is gonna be a lot better than the old motor. We just got this long block assembled with forged rods, forged pistons. We opened up the ring gap a bit, so the bottom end is much better built for boost. We have the same built head that I did for the other motor. The only difference is we bent four valves when that rod decided to uh, try to make its moon landing. So we got the, the valves replaced and the valve guys, but basically it's free of valves and free of valve springs and titanium retainers. So semi-built head, semi-built bottom end. It's not sleeved or anything, but we're not trying to make that much power. The main thing we're trying to do with this is to allow us to make the low end torque that my turbo setup can make. The turbo setup is really quick to spool and wants to make a ton of low end torque, but even with we try to pull torque out of it before it still sent a rod through the block so the idea here is now with the rods and pistons set up we should be able to actually utilize that low end torque and have a 450 500 wheel horsepower monster on our hands that makes full boost at like 3200 rpm so it should be a really fun combo really excited to get this in so we've got the long block assembled got it all timed all that mechanically it's done the long box complete. We just gotta put all the fun shiny parts on it, do some fab work, some modifications, get it all done and dusted, ready to go back in the car. So that's the plan for today. I'll quit jibber jabbering and get to it. So the first step was getting the timing cover finished up and back on. So I'm using Honda Bond. I, I like Honda Bond even if I'm not putting a Honda together, this stuff works better than any silicone. Don't let anyone tell you it's the same. It's not the same. Honda Bond is a freak of nature. So anyway, I beat it up and then I spread it out as evenly as possible. Try to make sure I don't have too much or too little. It's a good way to know before you go to put it on and then find out one way or the other. So we start getting the timing cover on. Now this is the timing cover off my old motor, my K24A2. This is a K24A4 block. And as I'm putting my old timing cover on, I notice there's, there's one bolt that's different. It's a big bolt on my timing cover, but it's a small thread on the block. So I had to kind of figure out a remedy, but I went ahead and snugged everything up. I like to snug it up just barely by hand and then wait for the gasket to set and then I'll go torque it down. I also went ahead and got our oil filter relocation on and caught and then we started prepping our water pump housing. Now this is a really odd setup on the K24. That middle part with the o-ring is actually the water pump and the water passage. Everything else is actually your PCV system, your crankcase ventilation. Really, really odd setup. I haven't seen anything like it on another engine. Now this is a part that we carried over from the new engine because on our old engine we had to heavily modify it for the intake manifold we ran. Our new intake manifold allows us to keep the serpentine belt tensioner which we needed the mount for which is on this one so we got it cleaned up, got it installed, simple enough. We then got our Toge Factory coolant outlet on. This allows us to basically reclock where the water outlet goes since we're now putting a front wheel drive motor and a rear wheel drive chassis. I then started working on some of the odds and ends to finish the engine up like getting our VTEC solenoid on and torqued down and then moved on to setting the valve wash. I didn't want to forget it. I didn't want to do this as the last step because I would forget it and it's a bit of a tedious process to get right and it's a lot easier to do it out here on the engine stand than it is to do it in the car when you're reaching around things. I just wish I had the cool tool to do it. Would have been easier. All right, got the timing cover on, oil filter housing, water pump housing, went ahead and adjusted the valve lash, got the valve lash all set up. So next up, we get to put the shiny parts on, the oil pan. So this is a Toge factory oil pan. So they make the swap kit that we used on this car and a lot of the parts we're using, the rear water neck, motor mounts, they make a ton of stuff for K-swaps. Um, this is their new setup with the billet bottom pan. So this is all one piece as opposed to being welded. It's so nice. So we flipped this thing upside down and started working on getting the pan on. So same process with the RTV here. Run a nice thin bead, thinner than you think. There's always more than you think. And if it's not enough in one spot, you can usually kind of mix and match, spread it from another spot and get a nice even coat. You don't need a lot of it. These are two machine surfaces. I also go back through with a Q-tip and try to clean out the threads. You're always going to get some in the threads, but if you have too much, you can basically blow the end of the, the whole hole out if it's a captive hole. So gotta be careful there. But anyway, we go ahead and get the bolts in, get it all torqued down, 
and flip it back over, we are done with the pan. So then I went ahead and got a couple of the last small things on, including the VTC solenoid here at the front, and then I wanted to work on getting the valve cover on, getting the engine completely sealed up. So we put our grommets in, get the nuts on, and get it all tightened and torqued down so it's all sealed up there. And then I wanted to go ahead and put the plugs in just to seal it up. Now I don't have my new plugs yet, so we have to throw the old plugs in, which these would probably work except for one got smashed to oblivion when the uh, piston broke in half and let go and all, all, all the chaos happened. So we're putting them in for now and getting the coil packs in just to seal everything up so the motor is completely sealed. So we kept chugging along since our goal is to make this thing drop in ready. We went ahead and got the alternator on. We started putting our ATI damper on, slid that on, got it tightened down. We'll have to torque this once it's in the car, but at least it's tightened if we forget. All right, well, got the engine cleaned up, got the valve cover on, oil pan on, crank pulley. This lady's working on putting the motor mounts on now. She is most of the way there to being a complete full ready to drop in engine. So I'm working on the intake manifold. So this is my old intake. I gotta swap my injectors and my throttle body to the new Toge factory intake. So they came out with this after I built the car. Otherwise I definitely would have gone with this one from the start. This thing is so nice. It's designed around working in this chassis. Before this, there's really no option that was optimized for a Nissan S chassis, or really a lot of rear-wheel drive chassis. It's either one for a Miata or this one that I had, which is meant for a front-wheel drive car and just flipped to work in a rear-wheel drive car. Let's get this stuff swapped over and uh, get her on the, on the engine. So we started out by swapping over our Detrox AN adapter fittings. So when I took these out, I noticed the O-rings were pretty squished flat. So I decided to go ahead and replace the O-rings. The last thing we want is fuel leaking. So I went ahead and pulled the rail off the new intake manifold to get it ready for our Detrox injectors and pulled the old rail and injectors out of the Skunk 2 manifold we had before. Now the injector O-rings were all in really good shape, but we went ahead and used our Detrox Master injector O-ring kit, super handy to uh, give you some of the grease to grease them up before we put them in. You always wanna grease your injector O-rings before you put them in, or you might tear them, and you might spray fuel everywhere, and obviously that is a bad call. Nobody wants fuel spraying all over their engine bay on the uh, first startup attempt. So we get that tightened down, make sure everything's good, and then go ahead and pull our throttle body off of our old intake manifold and get that swapped over to the new intake manifold so it is ready to go on the engine. So we go ahead and go to toss it on the engine. Now I don't have a gasket. I forgot to order a gasket, so I just wanted to mock it up and see what it looked like. So we just get it in with a couple bolts just to eyeball it. I wanted to kind of compare against the old intake manifold sizing because I'm gonna have to redo this side of the intercooler pipe, so I was trying to get an idea of what was gonna need to be done, what wasn't, etc. With the intake manifold on, we wanted to see the complete package, so we went ahead and tossed the turbo manifold on, got our turbo in place, and started mocking up the downpipe and the wastegate to see how everything was gonna fit together, everything was gonna look together, because we are gonna have to do some modifications over on this side as well. Small stuff, simple stuff, should make a huge difference though. All right, well, here is the engine, most of the way buttoned up and complete. Man, I am so stoked to see this thing all together it, it looks so cool the whole combination of parts really cool to see my downpipe setup I built on here I've only ever seen it in the car so just to see how everything ties together out of the car from a side profile it's it's cool it's cool gets me hyped really stoked on the intake manifold man uh, so the one th dilemma we have I ordered this throttle body online it was a K-series throttle body, uh, but what they mean by K-series throttle body is it's a, some other throttle body and they give you an adapter to a K-series flange. So the Toge Factory Manifold has an adapter to K-series throttle body, but we're, we don't really have a K-series throttle body. We have some other throttle body with an adapter. So we basically gotta run adapter and adapter, which I'm not super fond of. Toge Factory does make a number of adapters for these manifolds, so we could switch to something like a Bosch throttle body, uh, but we'll see, we'll see. It just really depends on how this all fits in there. Because the exciting thing, what I'm most excited about about running this manifold, besides it looking way nicer, is it putting the throttle body so much further over here as opposed to being really tight to the engine, it should make our intercooler piping almost maybe a dead straight shot. If you saw the Sokka before building the V-mount kit for this, we need to jog the pipe left, but then straighten it back out right. And it being a V-mount, it's so close, there wasn't enough room to make a big left and a big right. So we had to pitch the end tank of the intercooler and then jog it right. And I mean, we just barely got the curve in we needed. So I'm really hoping that we'll be able to have a straight end tank and just run pretty much straight into the throttle body, maybe one pie cut at the end to pitch it into the angle of the throttle body. Uh, it's always killed me, that, that big angle on the intercooler, but it was just really the only way to do it. So, oh, a whole lot of jibber driving to say, what's next? 
Well, what's next is we gotta do some other modifications. So this is a Toge factory manifold, really nice manifold. The only problem is the V-band flange is a G series, a Garrett V-band flange. We have a Borg Warner EFR 7163. So it's the same diameter, it clamps on, it, it's close. The big difference though is the fire ring. So this is the Borg Warner one. And you can see this ring that seals it is really tall and really thick. The Garrett one is a lot shorter and a lot slimmer. So basically you can just kind of slide the turbo around on the flange. So it's not sealing great. Now I knew that when I put it together, but when we took it apart, I confirmed you could see multiple spots where exhaust gas was leaking. And exhaust gas leaking pre-turbo is going to slow down spool up. So with a proper flange for this turbo on there, this thing should spool even faster, which is gonna be absolutely absurd. So I really wanna get that done. Now the struggle is it would be ideal to do this in the car. Have the engine in the car, have everything mocked up in place and make sure everything's gonna fit back the way it should. However, we are waiting on a custom part. Until we get that, we can't put the engine in. So I don't wanna wait till then to put the engine in, then modify this, because after that, once this is modified and done, I wanna send the manifold and the downpipe, maybe even the exhaust housing in to get ceramic coated. So I don't wanna wait to put the engine in, then wait for the ceramic coating. Ideally, if I can get this done out of the car, by the time it's done with ceramic coating, put the engine in the car and not be delayed. So jibber jabber, that's the point. So I think we'll be able to get it pretty close with the way this is all set up. Since the wastegate is tied back into the downpipe here, we kind of have a, a fixed relationship between this flange and this flange and this flange, and this isn't changing. It's also really tight tolerances on this downpipe. You can see it's about a quarter inch, if that, from the runner. So I think if we can match all that back up, we'll know that it's most likely gonna fit fine. So I, that's what we're gonna try to do. We're gonna try to modify this manifold out of the car and hope we can get everything back right. There's tight tolerances on everything. The intake pipe, the intercooler pipe, all of that is, is really tight. So we can be off maybe a little bit, but not a lot of it. So we're gonna have to take our time, but I think we can do it. So that's what we're gonna work on next. Let's uh, quit the jibber jabber and dive in. <laughs> show you what I mean before we start hacking this apart. So you can see this is the G-Series flange and this is our Borg Warner flange. So see how much taller it is and how much thicker it is. Neither one's good or bad, it's just this is designed for a Garrett, this is designed for a Borg. Yeah, see that walks in place way better. That, and that'll definitely seal it up significantly more they just flange on flange. You can see here what I was talking about with the exhaust gas. We were just pouring exhaust gas out there. Let's get to it. So we started pulling the turbo manifold off and trying to decide how we were gonna cut this flange off. We want as flat and as straight of a cut as possible, but unfortunately, I would like to cut it in my bandsaw, but there's just not enough room. The mouth, the opening is not wide enough. So we had to devise another plan. So I decided to mount it to my fixture table using these threaded bosses. These pop into the holes and then you can thread bolts into them and tighten something down. However, despite all the hardware I have, this whole two bolt bins of new fresh hardware, it's all metric. Every last bit of it is metric. So that's not gonna work. These are standard threads. So I start digging through my old bolt bin. This is stuff I've saved off cars and who knows where honestly all of this has come from, but I have a American standard thread bin. Then we dig through that and we happen to find the exact bolts we need to clamp this thing down to the table. So we grab those and start mounting our turbo manifold to the table. Now the idea here is to just hold it in place while we cut it, but also we can use this as a fixture to try to match where that V-band flange is. So I use a speed square and basically mark where that ends up on the flange and kind of what angle it is at the flange. The flange isn't perfectly square with it. And then we mark where the flange itself is on the table so we can bolt it back in the exact same spot. So then once we get the new flange tacked on, we can see if we're even remotely close. If the straight edge lines up on its marks and the flange is lined up on its marks and the angle's all correct, we know we're good to go. So we start cutting this thing with a cutoff wheel and it, it goes pretty good for the first half, but we've got this wastegate tube in the way. So trying to get around this wastegate tube is gonna become a pretty big struggle for us. So we start trying to cut around with the four inch 
it's still not working. Still it didn't get much progress. So I get out the die grinder with the two inch cutoff wheel. Now my hope here is I can kind of get it down in the flange itself and cut from the inside, but that doesn't work. So I work my way around and it, it was a struggle. I started having to cut it at an angle, tried to wear the disc down to where I could get it down in the center and cut that last little bit, which really wasn't working either. So we started hammering and that got the job done. Now it wasn't pretty, but it'll do. We gotta clean it up though. So in comes the Ameribray belt grinder. I use this thing for everything. It has been a lifesaver on fab projects. So the idea here is just to grind it as flush as we can, put a little bevel on it, and that's about it. So with the ground down a bit, I've got a rough idea of where I want the flange to be and where it needs to be tacked on. So I decided to go ahead and just try to tack it in the rough location, mount it back to the table, see if it's even close, it's a little off, it's a bit tall, it's, it's not quite perfect, but I decided to try to test fit it on the engine and see if it's gonna work, you know? It might still line up, it might line up better than it did before, we don't know. So we just start bolting everything back together. We used just the turbo housing so we didn't have to mess with the turbo, but basically if the downpipe lines up with the wastegate and the wastegate dump tube lines up with the downpipe, if all of that lines up together and the downpipe doesn't hit the manifold and is in the right spot, we're probably okay. So we have to do some jimmying and some moving and some flexing to get everything hooked up and it, it fits, it bolts together, but we can tell it's not right. It's a little further from the manifold, which means it might hit the steering shaft. And as much as I wanted to just send it, this wasn't right, we had to try again. So we put this thing back on the table and start to work on cutting the tacks. I hate having to cut tacks because I feel like the parts are never the same once they've had tacks and the tacks have been cut but we gotta do what we gotta do. We've gotta make this fit a little better. So we go ahead, we cut the tacks off, we get the flange off, and it's time to grind this stuff down a little bit more. We need to basically lower the flange about an eighth to a quarter of an inch and change the angle just slightly. So we gotta get an idea of what we need to do and start doing it. So back to the belt grinder we go. We've gotta switch the setup and use our notching setup. So we have all these different size rollers to do different size notches and we need to notch the flange itself for where the wastegate tube goes. And this time we do things a little different. I bolt the manifold back into place where it was and kind of eyeball the flange there before I tack it to hopefully get it a little bit closer. So now we go ahead and start tossing it back on the engine again, start tossing all of the accessory parts back on and see if we get things to line up a little better this time. So we get everything back in place, everything tightened back down and everything seems to fit together a lot better this time. It's still not 100%, but you know, we're never really gonna get it to 100% exactly the way it was. Modifying something, replacing something in the middle of something that's already been fabricated is a lot harder than making something new. But we were happy with where it was, so it was time to weld it. So instead of just throwing a couple tacks on it, pulling it off and welding it on the bench, I decided to weld as much as I could of it on the engine while everything was in place, the turbo housing, the downpipe, the wastegate flange, the wastegate tube, all that's tying things together and keeping it where it needs to be. So we welded about three quarters of it and then let it cool off. All right, well, I welded up as much of this as I could get to with it all put together that way. It couldn't move, it couldn't warp, everything was in place. When I welded it, I let it completely cool down. So that way, all we gotta weld off is that last little bit. And I've, I've gotta take the clamp and the housing off for that. I'd like to weld it with the housing on, but I just can't get back there. There's not a lot of room. So I'll pull it off, I'll do that. I might, I might throw another pass at it. It's just more heat, more chance to warp. We'll see. See how I feel once I get it off. But glad I was able to get most of it with it on and all in place. We got everything fitting back nice and everything back where it was. So really happy with that. This is gonna be a game changer to actually have the right flange on this manifold. Uh, also, Josue is tripping down the front of the car, you may have noticed because we are gonna paint the bay. So I was gonna skimp out on this because the goal is to get this thing back up and running very quickly. You know, the we have to get back to working on the vet. We've got a time crunch on that. We gotta get that thing done. Um, at a minimum, I'd like to at least get the bay painted and most of the parts back on it. So at least the parts aren't scattered about. They're not crammed in the car. We've got a complete car and we can tinker with it when we have time and finish it and get it running. But I really like to get it running in the next week, so. That's the goal, we'll see if that happens. Oh, but what I was getting at is, I wasn't gonna paint the bay because of that, but I said, when I pulled the motor out, I'd paint the bay. So we gotta paint it. We've gotta do it. I ordered the paint stuff. I just, mm, the time, I don't wanna go down the rabbit hole, but I also don't wanna put the motor back in, just take it back out and paint it later. So we're doing it, moral of the story. So I'm gonna pull this manifold off, finish welding it. So he's gonna keep taking this apart, keep doing things. Thank you. 
So with the thermal manifold modifications done and dusted out of the way, we needed to modify our rear water outlet. So I needed to add a bleeder port. I had kind of a makeshift one in the heater hose. I wanted to add a nice AN line to the expansion tank so that we could easily bleed the system, bleed the air out of the top of the cooling system. So we drilled a hole in our Toge factory water neck and started welding in this 6AN fitting. Now this was a bit of a struggle. Um, I had a bit of a hard time welding this. It, it just being such thick, CNC to aluminum and then the layout of where we had to put the fitting and that kind of interrupting with the flange and it, it wasn't my best work. We'll just say that, you'll, you'll see what I mean. All right, well, my second weld project did not go as well as the first. This is a bit of a struggle. I didn't clean it. I thought about it as I was about to weld it and one of those things, laziness took over. Don't let laziness take over. It's, it's all fitting good, I'll just weld it. Yeah, one of those things. So should have cleaned it. Going up on this ridge was a little hard. I couldn't get all the way around the fitting. So getting down in these corners was tough. It just didn't come out great. The difficulty is we can't really test it for leaks until it's on the car, but this goes at the back of the engine and is right by the firewall. So I don't think we can get it out in the car. We might be able to, I'm not hundred percent, but that's the only thing. I'm, I'm hoping it didn't warp. It took a lot of heat to weld to that. Cause you know, it's a big billet block of aluminum. So we'll see. Uh, Toge Factory makes these now with the port already in it because this is basically gonna be a steam port slash a bleeder port to uh, get the air out of the top of the system. So I'm, I might just get a new one. I don't know. I think it'll be okay, but I would hate to have to pull the engine over something so silly. So I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, Josue got the front pretty much completely stripped. Like there is really not much left at all on this thing. So I uh, made quick work of that. It makes me feel better about going down the rabbit hole a little bit to do the painting of the bay because I mean, that was the biggest concerning part was taking all this out. I'm super happy we got the manifold done. The ceramic coating was another one of those. I really wanted to do it during this phase, whenever this phase came. But with the time crunch of the vet, I was like, I don't know if I wanna go down that rabbit hole either and get that done because then it's gonna take more time and so on and so forth. But I'm really excited to get this stuff coated, especially because it got all nasty from the fire extinguisher dust. If it hadn't, maybe I would, maybe I would say, eh, we'll leave it. But I wanted to ceramic coat it from the start. So I'm glad we're getting that opportunity. Moral of the story. So engines pretty much fully together. Uh, I'm not gonna secure that or the manifold. Obviously we gotta get the manifold dropped off at the ceramic coaters. I'm waiting on the gasket for the rear housing. So waiting on a couple things to tidy this up. That's the biggest thing. Once we have that, should be able to put this motor trans everything together. Should be done with painting the bay, drop it back in. So still plenty of more work to do, but we are we're hammering things out. So with that being said, we're gonna call it the night. So that's gonna be it for this video. Uh, for now, I'm always used to saying for now before the end. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, goodbye. <laughs>